Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, today, or in this video, we're going to continue with 5.1. This will be our second video. Here, we're going to simplify rational expressions. So we looked at domains, the domain for them in the last video, and values that break the domain or don't fit in the domain, what I call domain violations. Uh, so when we want to simplify, I, I gave a couple examples where things did simplify. Like we had 36, no, I had 40 times x plus 7 over 36 times x plus 7. That was one of the examples we did. The next example was x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. And the last one we did was y minus 5 over 2y squared minus 9y minus 5. So simplifying rational expressions, uh, the, the idea of what we're going to use, we're going to use the fundamental pr principle of rational expressions. And it relates, this is very much stuff we did with fractions. So this isn't really much different, but now we have variables in it. If I had something like P over Q and I multiply it by R over R, this is P times R over Q times R. Uh, and it's still, if we started here, we can go back to it's the same values P over Q. <laughs> so long as Q doesn't equal zero and R doesn't equal zero. So what this is saying is, A, we can cancel stuff, cancel terms that match on top and bottom or numerator, denom denominator. That's this part right here. The R's can cancel. And this also says, if I look at the first part here, we can multiply by, multiply both top and bottom by the same value or expression without changing the value. without changing the expressions, really. Because R over R equals one. So we get, we're gonna use both of those. For primarily we're gonna use canceling, but sometimes if we don't have a common denominator, we need to get a common denominator to do addition and subtraction. And in that case, we can do it and not adjust anything. So that's good stuff. Uh, it's worth noting when you do this, even if something cancels from top and bottom, when I say something, I mean a term or an expression. Cancels out on top and bottom. We still can't use its value in the domain. So let's take a, I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, on the first, let's just look at A. On A, we had 40 over 36 and x plus 7 over x plus 7. And we saw that x could not equal negative 7. To simplify this, though, we can simplify things that are, multi that are multiplied by everything on top and bottom. It has to be multiplied. 
must multiply everything. in both spots. I'll show you where that how that doesn't work in a second. Okay, so as long as x doesn't equal negative seven, we're good. Then we'll look at how this simplifies. We simplify the numbers like normal. 40 is four times 10. And 36 is 4 times 9. So right now, the 4 is multiplied by everything. We can cancel that out and leave a 1. The x plus 7 is multiplied by everything, and we can cancel out and leave a 1. And we're just left with 10 over 9. OK? Let's take a look at the x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2. I need to put a little weight on this fan in here. It keeps blowing everything. We can right away see that x equals 2 is not in the domain. I, this is the difference of cubes. That x cubed minus 8 is x cubed minus 2 cubed. So the numerator is x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. Recall a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. Now our bottom remains x minus 2. And now the x minus 2s, this is multiplied by everything on top, so it cancels. And leaves behind a 1. And so what remains is just x squared plus 2x plus 4. but x cannot equal two, okay? I'm gonna show you this on Desmos, it's kind of neat. Let me open up Desmos. Ah, it helps if you type the right thing, Desmos. So I'm gonna say, I gotta use a x here so that it shows it. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then we're going to divide it by x minus 2. And it makes this graph right here. But notice what happens. Like, if I put my cursor anywhere on this graph, it gives us a point. We're going to do graphing like this later. But when I get to x equals 2, it says undefined. So even though x squared plus 2x plus 4 has the exact same graph, notice that here on the red one, we can equal 2. It says undefined. But if I look at it on the blue one, the value is 12. So if we start off with something in the denominator, we can't have it. It's it's where it equals zero in the domain ever. That's kind of neat. Uh, then we had 5x minus 2. Over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, that isn't the one we did. Nothing simple. That was an example of rational expressions. Uh, the one we did was, I got it written down right here. We had y minus 5 over 2y squared minus 9y minus, 
five. And this ended up being y minus five, two y plus one, y minus five, when we factored it. Here, y minus five cannot equal zero. So if I add five to both sides, y cannot equal zero, or not equal five. When I cancel, that still happens. Y minus five is multiplied by everything here, so I can cancel it. When I do, it leaves behind a one. Notice if you don't put the one behind, it doesn't look like there's anything left on top. And that's wrong. This just ends up simplifying to one over two y plus one. What we cannot do, we cannot, 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 don't do this, cannot do this. If I had y minus five over two y squared minus nine y minus five, we can't just cancel the negative fives and say this is y over 2y squared minus 9y. That doesn't work. And it doesn't because negative 5 is not, or 5 isn't being multiplied to the y, it's being subtracted from y. 5 has to multiply by everything. So don't make that mistake. I see a lot of students making that mistake. I've seen them do it in calculus. I've seen them make some silly mistakes in calculus three. Like students that are gonna be engineers do some simple stuff like this, it just doesn't work. You can't do that. Okay, uh, let me give you guys a couple to practice. Notice that on this one, we had to factor to simplify. So you may have to factor first. Uh, why don't you give the following a try? That's a 36. And on bottom, we'll have 42b squared y to the fifth. That's a basic one for you. Then we'll do 3p minus 3q over 6q squared minus 6p squared. Give those a try real quick. All right, so when we do this one, I'll call this A and this B. A, 36 is six times six. And I'll see if it needs to break down more after I'm done. Six times seven is 42. Six is cancel. Seven is a prime number and it doesn't go into six, so I don't need to break down the six anymore. Then for the other parts, we're gonna, we can do that subtract exponents like we did before. And I get six sevens B Y to the negative one. So rather than leaving negative one, I'm gonna put it back on bottom. We will have six B over seven Y. Here, B cannot equal zero and Y cannot equal zero. Because that would make the de denominator zero. Next, we'll take a look at B. Well, start off, we factor out a common, the greatest common factor from top and bottom. Six is two times three. 
and the threes will cancel and leave a one. So right now I've got P minus Q over two times. This is the difference of squares. This is Q minus P times Q plus P. These don't look the same and they're not. P minus Q is not the same as Q minus P. But check this out. If I multiply this by negative one over negative one, I'm gonna multiply the negative in here and we'll get negative P plus Q. On the bottom, I'm just gonna put the negative with the two. And I can rearrange the order of this and this will be Q minus P. If I do that, now they cancel. And I'm left with one over negative two times Q plus P or P plus Q. And I normally put the negative out front. Now that's what we're doing is multiplying the negative one by negative one. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Blakely covers it that way. Let's go take a look and see how he does it. He, it you can also just factor it out. Uh, but let's take a look and see how he does it. I stole the problem from him. Look at that. I don't know how he did it, though. He says, at this point, we have a couple factors that are very close, but not exactly the same. He, he does the following. He factors a negative out, which works. That's another way of looking at it. So rather than multiplying by negative one and negative one on top, you can say uh, P minus Q. If I factor out a negative one, this is Q minus P. And most students, once you get used to it, it's okay. But the first time you're seeing it, you're like, huh? And what's going on is what we did right here. This is the sped up version of multiplying top and bottom by negative one. Okay. Uh, let's give you a harder one. Let's do one more that's harder and we'll wrap this section up. Let's go with 3x cubed minus 12x over 6x cubed minus 24x squared plus 24x. Go ahead and work that out. See what you come up with. All right. I will assume you did. I can see both numbers on top have a 3 in them, and they both have an x. And that's going to leave behind x squared minus 4. On the bottom, all the numbers are divisible by 6x. That's going to leave x squared minus 4x plus 4. I can see already that this is going to simplify some. Our 3s cancel with the 3 out of the 6 on bottom. The x here cancels. And so right now I'm gonna write the next line. We're gonna do the factored form. X squared minus four is the difference of squares. That is X minus two, X plus two. I still have a two in the denominator. I'll write that in red. That's the old stuff. 
And if I factor x squared minus 4x plus 4, I have x minus 2 and x minus 2 again. All right, just like in fractions. OK, so domain violations come from here. So our domain violations come from this one. We'll do it in a second. These only cancel out in pairs, one on top, one on bottom. This ends up being x plus 2 over 2 times x minus 2. It only cancels out with one of the x minus 2s on bottom, not both. The original denominator, if we factor it, still has that 6x, even though I canceled it. And then it's got x minus 2, x minus 2. If we set that equal to 0, we can see that x equals 0 and x equals 2 are solutions. So these are the domain violators. Or domain violations. So our interval notation would be negative infinity to 0 in union with 0 to 2 in union with 2 to infinity for our domain. And the domain is just like, what values of x can I put input? OK, that's it for 5.1. Peace.